Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're on dividing polynomials so we can answer questions from exercise 7b. So what do I mean by dividing a polynomial? Well we saw some algebraic division uh, in the first video of this uh, chapter 7 series but here we're going to look at how we would do this not for necessarily quadratics but for um, things like cubics and quartics. So um, let's just remind ourselves of the box method first because this is how we're going to be doing this um, algebraic division. So the box method works by putting the two brackets uh, side by side on a box <coughs> and then we would multiply the values outside of the boxes to get the values inside the boxes and then we would simplify afterwards. Okay, so just notice here what has happened inside this box a little further. The x squared term, the highest power of x, is always going to appear in this top left-hand cell. It's always going to be the highest power of x up here and the highest power of x up here. So multiplying those two together will give us the highest power of x. And the number that's uh, the constant at the end of the polynomial is going to be the value that's in the bottom right-hand cell of the, of the box method. Um, that's no matter whether we're expanding a quadratic or a cubic with a linear or a quadratic or a cubic term. The bottom right-hand cell is always the constant. The top left-hand cell is always the highest power. So let's have a look now at doing this, uh, effectively, this box method process in reverse with this polynomial here. So we're doing x cubed plus 2x squared minus 17x plus 6 by x minus 3. So first, we, what we're going to consider is what the degree of our answer is going to be. What I mean by degree is the highest power on the x. Well, if I've got an x minus 3 uh, term times by something um, that will give me my answer of the cubic polynomial, then the answer to this, what this something is here, is going to be a quadratic term because I have to times uh, the x by an x squared term to get my x cubed term here. And the the 6 that's going to be at the back will be the two constant terms multiplied together at the end. So let's set up a little box method. What we need is for the answer to appear inside the box cells, the x minus 3 will appear on the left-hand side of the box method. And the answer, uh, effectively what the quadratic is, is going to appear on the top of the box here, like this here. So let's put those uh, numbers into place then. So we're going to have x and a minus 3 uh, down the left here. And all of the values of this uh, cubic expression here will add together uh, when we simplify all the terms inside the box here. Now first what we have to think about is the x cubed term. So we'll pop that x cubed term in there. And then we have to work our way backwards what times is by x to make x cubed? And that's going to go up here. Well, the simple answer to that is just x squared. So x squared is going to be the first term in my answer. But then I have to think, well, that's going to expand with the minus 3 as well. So that's going to give me minus 3x squared. But that's not the amount of x squareds that I'm looking for in my answer. I'm looking for 2x squared. So what I'm going to need to do here is in this cell here, add on 5 more x squareds, and we can see here that x times the x is going to give us the correct power of x's. So what I need here is for the b to be the value 5, so it's plus 5x that's going to appear in the second term of our answer. But once again, we'll have to expand this with the negative 3 times 5x, so we're going to get minus 15. However, this is not the value that we are looking for um, for our coefficient on x. The value we're looking for is minus 17. So if we're already down at minus 15, we're going to have to just take away another 2x's for our answer to simplify to make minus 17x. So the powers on the x's uh, nicely match up. We have one power of x here and no powers of x here. So what times is by x to make minus 2x? That's going to be minus 2. And let's just now double check the bottom right hand cell gives us in fact the correct answer 6 yes it does 
Okay, so our final answer here is going to be appearing on the top of this box here, a bit like short, short numeric division here. Um, this is what we've done. So uh, when you do x cubed plus 2x squared minus 17x plus 6 divided by x minus 3, your answer is x squared plus 5x minus 2. Or effectively, you could write x cubed plus 2x squared minus 17x plus 6. And if we times x minus 3 onto the other side, we could write this like this. It's going to be x minus 3 times this quadratic term here that will give us our cubic answer. Right, okay, so we know then that x minus 3 is a factor because we have no remainder in this answer here. The 6 here nicely matches up with the 6 that we have at the end there. Okay, let's, uh, let's have another go at another one then just to get some more practice of this. Um, write f of x, which is 4x to the power 4 minus 17x squared plus 4 in the form 2x plus 1 and then a cubic expression here. So, we're going to need to divide our original polynomial by 2x plus 1 to get our answer here. So, we're going to divide by 2x plus 1. So, first consider the degree of the answer, and that's just going to be um, what they've given us here. It's going to be a cubic term. So, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And then when we times all of this out here, we're going to get this answer here. Notice how it doesn't have a cubic term or an x term um, to a single power of x. Um, so those coefficients are going to be represented with a zero. We'll see how that works in a second. So just a reminder, all of this f of x term here is going to be appearing as a simplified addition of what appears in our boxes. The 2x minus 1 is going to be appearing down the left-hand side, and our answer is going to be appearing on the top here. So the first thing we need to do, as always, is put the 4x to the power of 4 in the top left-hand cell here. And then we think, well, what times this by 2x to give us 4x to the 4? Well, it'll be 3 more powers of x, that's x cubed, that's great, that's what we want. And then 2 times 2 will give me 4, so it needs to be 2x cubed. But remember, when I expand this bracket here, that will eventually be 2x cubed. I'm going to have to expand it with the plus 1 as well. So I'll expand it with the plus 1 inside my box to give me 2x cubed. But I don't want any x cubed terms. My x cubed term is equal to 0. So I'm going to have to cancel this out in some way. So what I need is for a minus 2x cubed to be the next term that appears here. Right, oh, whoops, that's supposed to be a squared. Right, okay, what we need to do next is to think, well, what times is by 2x to give me minus 2x cubed? And that answer there is going to be uh, minus x squared. Uh, one more, two more powers of x needed to be added on, and it needs to be negated. We already have the 2 over here, so just be minus times the 2 will give us minus 2. And as with before, we're going to need to expand into the plus 1 expression as well. So we're going to get minus x squared here. Now the term on the x squared is going to be minus 17. Make sure you always include the negative part of that coefficient as well. So we need to take away a further 16 x squared from this cell here. Now what times is by 2x to make uh, minus 16 x squared? Well that's going to be minus 8x. OK, let's expand minus 8x with the plus 1 now, so we get minus 8x. And the coefficient on the x in our answer is going to be 0. So what we have to have is a value in this cell here that will cancel out the minus 8x. So that's going to be a plus 8x. Now, what does the value of d need to be? Well, that's obviously just going to be a 4. And expanding the last value here, does that match up with the 4 that's on the end of this expression here? Yes, it does. We've probably done this question correctly. If it doesn't, make sure you go through your workings or maybe even just start from scratch and have another go at this method. 
So your final answer is this thing here, 2x plus 1, which is in our answer, and then the cubic expression for our answer is 2x cubed minus x squared minus 8x plus 4. Right, so let's now have a go at this slightly different question here. The question is, find the remainder when 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 16x plus 10 is divided by x minus 4. So what we mean by remainder, we'll see at the end. Think about what we meant by remainder um, for normal numbers. If you were to do 16 divided by 3, in primary school you'd have 5 with a remainder of 1. So this is effectively what we're going to say here. Um, so let's uh, set up what we mean here. That should be a 4 here. Um, so it's x minus 4 times by something will give us our answer of 2x cubed, etc. So let's think about what the degree of this something needs to be. And that's going to be an ax squared plus bx plus c. Reason being is that the highest powers of x will multiply together then to make 2x cubed. Okay, so let's set up our box. The quadratic term will appear on the top here, and the x minus 4 will appear down the left here. And let's now start inserting these values here into our boxes. So 2x cubed goes in first, that's up the top here. What needs to be the value for a? Well, that's just going to be 2. 2x squared times x will give me 2x cubed. Expand this also then, so if a is 2, we have to expand that and that term here. So expand this with the minus 4 and 2x squared, and we get minus 8x squared. How many x squareds do we actually need? Well, we only want minus 5x squareds, so we're going to have to add on 3 more x squareds in this cell here. Um, what needs to be the value b? Well, that's just going to be the value 3, so plus 3x. Uh, the next term we need to expand is 3x and the minus 4. That will give me minus 12x. How many x's do I actually want? Well, that's just going to be minus 16. So I need to take away a further 4x's. So the c value here is going to be minus 4. What do I get when I expand uh, minus 4 with minus 4? I get positive 16. So here is where the remainder now comes in. The remainder is going to be the difference between what we ended up with on the bottom here and what we should end up with here if it was a perfect division. If it was a perfect division with no remainder, this value here would be 10. However, the remainder is going to be, in this case, how we get from 16 to 10, and that's negative 6. Okay, So the remainder here can be negative, uh, in, in this case here with numeric values it's always going to be positive, but in this case here it is uh, negative. What we could also say here is that uh, 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 16x plus 10 is equal to x minus 4 times by 2x squared plus 3x minus 4 take away 6 on the end there. So that's its remainder. And you can see here, if we were to add this 16, 6 onto the other side, we'd get 16 for this expression here, which would mean the two uh, polynomials divide in perfectly. Right, so then your turn to have a go at this question here. Pause the video and see how you get on. Right, well done for pausing the video and seeing how you got on there. Um, let's have a go at this question now. So what does the answer look like to start with? Well, it's going to be x plus 4, and if my answer is going to be an x cubed term, then my answer needs to be here an ax squared term. So I need to find these values of a, b, and c. So let's set up my box method. I need three uh, rows, uh, three columns uh, for the ax squared, bx, and the c here, and I need x plus 4 down the left. Now, these values here are now going to be fitting into my, whoops, these values here are going to be fitting into my box, so I need x cubed in the top left to start me off. I need then an x squared term to appear up here to be what I need to multiply by x to make x cubed, and I'll also expand it with the 4 as well. How many x squareds do I actually need? Well, I need 10 x squareds, so I need a further 6 x squareds. So in this case here, I need a plus 6 x to appear on the top so that my box is multiplied to make 6 x squared. 
I also need 25 x's and when I expand this I'm only going to get 24 x's so I need one more x to appear in this value here. So x times 1 is going to give me 1x and 1 times 4 is 4. Have I got this question right? Yes, probably have because the 4 is at the end there. So my final answer here when I divide uh, this cubic term by x plus 4 is x squared plus 6x plus 1. Okay. Question 9 here is a remainder question. I've chosen question 9 basically because we have a missing x term here and I want to deal with questions like that. So exactly the same as we had before. We have an x minus 1 down the side and we're going to need three columns because if we're making an x cubed term up here, then I'm going to need an x squared term here, an x term here, and a number term here. So first of all, 3x squared, 3x cubed goes in here. So I need 3x squared to appear on the top. So these multiply to make 3x cubed. Then I expand my box method a little further. So I get minus 3x squared here. I want minus 2x squared in total, so I want to add on another x squared so that these simplify to make minus 2x squared. And up here I'm going to get a plus x to make that happen. Uh, down the bottom here when I expand on the minus 1 I'm going to get minus x. However, when I expand I'm not going to want any x's to appear. So to cancel this out, I need to add an x in this cell here so that these two values here cancel out. And so that, that works, I need a 1 to appear here. 1 times x is x. Times out with the minus 1 and I get minus 1. So what I need to do now to find the remainder is what do I need to add on to minus 1 to get it up to 4? Well, here I'm going to need to add on 5 as my remainder to get from minus 1 up to 4, which is exactly what the question is asking me to show. Show that the remainder is 5, and I've clearly shown here that the remainder is 5 here. Right, okay, well done for having a go at those questions then. Um, pause the video and have a go further at some more questions from exercise 7b so that you've mastered the topic. Remember, watching this video is only 10% of the learning. 90% of the learning is going to be you having a go at some of these practice questions here. Make sure you persevere through the difficult ones and ask your teacher for help if you need any. Right, thanks for watching.